Hey guys, Samantha Azir here. I've been thinking of a topic for a little while now, but I think I finally have it all put together. Missed opportunities in gaming. What I mean by that is consoles or gaming moments that I think they really missed an opportunity to really strike gold. So let's get started. First one on my list is, do you remember Pokemon Snap on the Nintendo 64? I feel like that game was pretty popular for its time. Now this was in the midst of like Pokemania and you were able to go to the store and get your like pictures printed out. And for me, I think it was a lot of fun being able to just discover different Pokemon in different like hidden areas to get the best pictures. But then they released it for the Nintendo Switch and it seemed very boring. And it could be just because we're all older, maybe it just the point and shoot aspect of it wasn't as fun. I feel like it didn't do as well. I think the missed opportunity was, and although the console didn't do well, so honestly, this probably didn't do, wouldn't have done much better anyway, but on the Wii U, the Wii U had the gamepad that would have been perfect for a camera that you could move and hit different functions like a real camera where there's different settings and you they could have made it just a little bit more in depth with the Wii U gamepad because the Wii U gamepad was designed to be with the games and it wasn't its like primary function like the Nintendo Switch where you can't use the Nintendo Switch like pad in addition to the game whereas with the Wii U you could. So I feel like that was a missed opportunity with Nintendo when they developed this Wii U to function the way that it does I mean, it shows really, really well in Nintendo Land, and yet they decided not to release Pokemon Snap on a unit where they literally could have had a dedicated controller camera. Am I the only one that thinks this? I've been playing Sleeping Dogs the Definitive Edition for the PS4 recently, and I have fallen in love with this game. It is a game that has such an interesting story. It is so captivating. I love the characters. The story is just so in depth and full of feeling and it makes you care. The world, although not that big, is so full that it feels like it's breathing life. So Sleeping Dogs 2 not existing, I think, is a really big missed opportunity. I truly think that the Sleeping Dog story is more interesting than any Grand Theft Auto story I have played. Now, I haven't played through a Grand Theft Auto game, so maybe I should shut up and learn a little bit more, but I really feel like Sleeping Dogs really did it right. You get to live and breathe in this like Hong Kong setting, so it's a little bit different. It's something that you're not typically used to. And the story really, like I said, makes you care. I can't, I don't want to spoil anything because I think everyone should play Sleeping Dogs if you haven't played it already. And I think I'd like to make a dedicated video of exactly why you should. But the fact that Sleeping Dogs 2 does not exist, I think is a great shame because I truly think that that game could rival Grand Theft Auto, regardless of how big they're trying to make it. Because ultimately the game is only as good as its story and its content. And I think that Sleeping Dogs slid under the radar and I don't know what exactly happened to make this game not as like popular as I think it should be, but I really think that it could be an epic game if we could get this game back on board or or somebody to start doing a second one. Like I, can we start like a petition or something? This one's probably beating a dead horse, but I'm gonna bring it up anyway. As you may or may not know, I'm not like the biggest Xbox fan, but when the Xbox 360 launched, it did really well. Even after the Red Ring of Death, it still had this big cult following. Bunch of gamers rallying together this epic game console that was like amazing and it stomped the PlayStation in that era. And then it was time for the next generation. And they decided that they wanted to release a console that required you to be online all the time, advertise TV shows and the accessibility of it acting like basically a TV, then forcing you to get a connect with it and jack up the price. You guys were literally riding the high wave and you pulled all of that crap. I would love to hear what happened in whatever boardroom to make you guys think that that was a good idea. 
So the missed opportunity is coming out with an even more epic gaming experience. Now, ultimately, they, I guess, did that later on with the Series X and whatever else they're doing in their digital this and digital that, whatever. Like I said, I'm not really following Xbox as much, but <laughs> you guys had it. You had the wave. And instead of riding it, you fell off your board and you decided that you wanted to essentially abandon everything that made you guys popular in the first place. I wonder what would have happened if they would have watched the Xbox One with maybe a larger capacity with a way more focus on video games and strong titles and ditched the Kinect, didn't make people go online all the time, I bet you that launch would have went like way more smoother. I wouldn't consider myself like a huge Harry Potter fan, but I grew up with it. I watched all the movies. I find them very fascinating and I watch them probably like once a year. So I know about them. And so when the Harry Potter game came out for the PlayStation 5, I was really excited to play this game. And although I haven't played through it and honestly I haven't dabbled too much in it, when I found out <laughs> that they did not have Quidditch in it, I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. You're telling me that you made this massive Harry Potter game that is, you know, HDMI, you know, current gen, and you, you didn't want to put Quidditch in it? Like, this was literally the opportunity to have an epic, like, side game within a game, and you didn't do it. You didn't even do it in a DLC. I feel like that is a major missed opportunity. I mean, they made a Quidditch game for the GameCube, so we all know it's possible, but why on earth would you leave out such a big portion of the Harry Potter world? And I know that the, this game isn't like you playing as Harry Potter, but don't you want to play Quidditch? Because I do. I know most of you who watch my videos are probably not the biggest Pokemon fans, but if you remember Pokemon Coliseum that was released for the GameCube, this was something that Pokemon Company did where they decided to take a chance and try this different storyline. And I would say for the most part later on in life, they didn't do it very well. Like I didn't like Sun and Moon and stuff like that, but Pokemon Coliseum was this like dark, gritty, like there's these Pokemon with like evil hearts and you have to capture them and cleanse them. And the, the storyline was just a, a bit more epic, a lot more fun. And I wish they would have like continued the storyline. I know they did Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, which did continue to play on that. But I really think with especially that West character in the first one, that they should have continued some sort of storyline paralleling that. Cause like, could you imagine like a current gen Pokemon Coliseum, like a like a bigger one, one with a bunch of Pokemon with the, the dark aspects, the trying to stop a evil team when you used to be a part of them. Like this was such a more interesting story with better like gameplay. It was, it was more captivating than the traditional like Pokemon like gameplay that they're doing now where it's just kind of this rinse and repeat type thing and it's really boring. I mean, I'm a big fan of the, the originals and I'm pretty sure I've said that many times on the channel, but if you have ever played Pokemon Coliseum, could you imagine like a current gen game like that just with way more content? I think that would be so much fun. I don't know if any of you are like fans of the mini consoles. I like them. I don't dislike them. I, I have both of them, the NES and the SNES. I even have the PlayStation 1. I'm really bummed they didn't do an N64 one. I love collecting for the N64. I think it would have been really cool to see an eight, like a mini with an HDMI port. Now I understand why they didn't do it is because they put all their crap on Switch Online. I think they could have made their money both ways because ultimately, I think the physical collectors were going to get it anyway and still pay for the online service. So I think they kind of missed out on being able to like double dip. And I would have really, really enjoyed seeing, you know, what, you know, the reproduction controllers, which I know they did the wireless ones, but with the console, with the HDMI, making it easier to do things like streaming or recording. I, I just, I feel like that was a missed opportunity because like I was, I really thought that's where they were going. And I really, I would still buy one now. I, I mean, do you guys feel this way at all? Do you feel like there's any like miniatures that we should have gotten? Like, what about the Dreamcast? Why is that not a thing? Last on my list, and this is a big wish for me, and I don't know if it will ever be. You know how there's the one-up arcades, 
and they've got the different things like the TMNT and stuff like that. Why has Nintendo not dipped into this? You already provide the first few Marios on the online service. Everyone owns it if they want to own it. If you made miniature arcade cabinets that were Nintendo branded with traditional Mario games on it, or, or really pick anything, maybe even a duck hunt cabinet or something like that, you don't think people would go out and buy that? You don't think we would all go spend money we don't have on these miniature cabinets? I would much rather have a Mario cabinet than my Simpsons arcade, which I do like having, but I mean, what are they worried about? Were people already emulating what they want to emulate? People already have it online or they already own it. So like, what are you missing out on? Do they think they're going to lose money? Because I, f I really think they could make money if they just did like a miniature arcade cabinet like series, even if they only did it for a little while just to see how it was. I mean, Nintendo, not they didn't start with the arcade cabinets, but you know, when they came to America, they were doing arcade cabs on the East Coast with like the different types that they had. And then they wanted to do Donkey Kong. They moved to Washington, long story short, they've been in the game before. And I think it would be really cool to see like a classic series or, or something like that, where you can have a Nintendo miniature arcade cabinet in your, in your home. Would you not buy that? So those are just some quick thoughts I, I was thinking of, of like missed opportunities in gaming. I mean, ultimately all of these things have pretty much come and gone. I mean, maybe, the last one could be a thing. I don't know. But I thought it would be fun to talk about some things that I kind of wish were real or would have changed. But what do you guys think? Do you have anything that you think of as a, like a missed opportunity that somebody really messed up and maybe they, things could have been different for a franchise or a company or whatever? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. And don't forget, there's a pixelated world waiting out there for you.